Hey, it's Marin, and this is the January 2020 monthly forecast for Scorpio risings. So we'll get started out with the astrology for the month, what the important transits are signaling for the changes and happenings in your life as a Scorpio rising. Then we will get into the tarot cards, the oracle deck cards, and the law of attraction cards to pull out some guidance for what best messages are coming our way to incorporate this energy into our lives. So overall for this month of the first month of 2020, first month of the new decade, this theme for you as a Scorpio rising is one of creating a safe, sustainable home for yourself. Creating this new paradigm for thoughts to manifest into feelings of safety and surroundings that support you and your personal growth. So starting in on the third, Mars will enter your Sagittarius second house. Wherever Mars goes, it can bring increased conflict and aggravation, or it can bring the drive to get shit done and accomplishment. A little trick to know here is that if you if you were born during the day, it tends to be more challenging. If you are born at night, Mars transits can be a bit more constructive. And as a Scorpio rising, Mars is your ruling planet, so Mars transits are especially, you know, um, important signals for you in your life. Mars entering the second house can deal with a bit more money trouble or it can deal with you really going after money, different manifestations, but there's more energy into handling your personal financial situation however that's manifesting this month. On the 9th, the sun will conjoin Mercury in your Capricorn third house. And because you are well aware of the huge transformations happening in your third house of short-term travel, siblings, communication, writing projects, things like that, the sun Mercury Kazemi indicates an illumination of information that's coming your way to provide insight into that transformation happening for you that has been going on for some time and will continue into 2020. On the 12th, or on the 10th, Uranus stations direct in your Taurus 7th house. So Uranus for the next few years through, through the greater part of the decade is indicating big shifts, revolutionary energy, and radical upheaval in your relationship world of one-to-one -one partnerships. Over the past few months with Uranus retrograde, there has been an analysis of what changes you have already made so far in your relationship world. But now with Uranus stationing direct, you can expect more unexpected changes, moments of lightning, inspiration, and innovation happening in any one-to-one one partnerships, whether that's romantic or business or familial in your life, those things are really getting a lightning burst of new energy this month and this year, this, this seven years basically. On the 12th, Saturn conjoins Pluto in your third house. This Saturn-Pluto conjunction will also be joined by the Mercury and the Sun within the next few days. So Saturn conjoining Pluto in your third house is the final structural boundary in grading this metamorphosis of how you're dealing with the third house in your life. There's been massive shifts of stepping into practical reality and rooted authenticity regarding your relationship with siblings, your communication into the world, how you speak your truth. And with this, Saturn-Pluto conjunction with the Sun and with Mercury, this is your time to speak into existence what your truth is in order to provide a supportive foundation for you and who you are in this new decade. There's been so much leaving the old way of life for you that this is the structure being implanted for a gateway for the more authentic communication style in you and your life to come forward during 2020. Totally different note, <laughs> on the 13th, Venus enters Pisces in your fifth house, which is a beautiful, beautiful transit. Like, Venus is entering the sign of her exaltation. It's moving into your house of creativity, romance, children, really awesome things that you create in your life of fun. Venus is bringing ease and harmony there. So this month is a great time to have fun with whatever romantic or creative projects or partners, romantic projects, creative partners, whatever is in your life to take advantage of how easily and romantically this is happening for whatever creativity is showing up in your life. On the 16th, Mercury enters Aquarius in your fourth house, and it will square Uranus and Taurus in your seventh house, which means that some communication at home is at odds with a need for unexpected lightning energy in your relationship world that you're trying to bring ideas into your home life, but they're kind of being sidetracked by some big happenings in your relationships that might be asking you to rebel in a relationship, but you have to stay rooted in being honest at your roots, at your core. 
On the 20th, the Sun will then enter Aquarius and will also square Uranus and Taurus. So again, there's more focus and illumination on your home and family world, whether that is your pre-existing family, your blood relatives, or the two creating this new home for yourself, which I feel is more of the focus for you collectively this month. But with the square to Uranus, be careful of doing something instantaneously or on a whim in relationships that will affect your ability to stay grounded in your truth in your firm foundation. On the 24th, there is a new moon in your Aquarius fourth house, a chance to plant seeds and manifest what you want to attract at that root of yourself, at your core, at your home and family, whether it is support at home with your family, whether it's manifesting a cool new home, or whether it's just you creating that safety for yourself with your self-talk, with your communication to you. On the 25th, Venus will square Mars between your 5th and 2nd houses, so the ease and harmony you're feeling in relationships is kind of in tension with your financial happenings right now. You may want to take all these grand gestures towards a romantic partner or towards a child, and you might have to realize that you're in more of a time of building up financially than you might be spending. What That doesn't mean that you're having trouble financially, but it might just mean that you're grappling with financial changes and aren't at a place here and now to be changing that up more than it's already changing amidst around you. On the 27th, the Venus conjoins Neptune in your fifth house, which is, I mean, a Venus-Neptune conjunction is just a beautiful, dreamy aspect. And with it in your romance house, like, the 27th is a beautiful day to take a date. Like, go take a date, like, Scorpio Risings. I'm going to, like, force you all to take a date or take a romantic day of art and spending a day with even a friend or going to a museum. Like, it'll be beautiful. Just make sure that you're not Seeing things is too good to be true instead of enjoying the moment here and now. Don't impose meaning on it. Just enjoy the feelings that are coming up. On the 27th, Mars will also score Neptune between your second and fifth houses. So don't let feeling really good about being with a romantic partner or spending the day with your kid or embarking on an artistic day to let you forget that you do need to be mindful about money. Not that you need to not have an abundance mindset, of course, trust that the universe is providing, see everything flowing your way, but if it's not your time to feel good about spending a lot of money, don't get sidetracked with a need to over embellish a situation. So this month really does have to do with staying true to your core, building a new home for yourself, both with your family members, and most importantly, the way that you speak to yourself and make your own internal world this month. So with that being said, let's pull a tarot card to see what tarot card comes through for Scorpio Risings this month. So this is really awesome. We have the star card and the star has to do with like good blessings coming our way, being invigorated by a new perspective. Like you are being flushed with the new idea of moving towards something. You are, an influence is coming in from the outside and it can, it's well concealed. Like there's a quiet restoration of creativity coming your way and it might mean that someone is supporting you to do that or it might mean that you are being that safety for yourself. Now let's pull a work your light oracle deck and see what oracle deck guidance comes through. Council of Light divine orchestration, helpers in subtle realms. Again, this is re-emphasizing this subtlety to this month of things really resonating and feeling great because the strings are all coming together. It's like the cooperative components to support your euphoric life are assembling so that you don't have to do the hard work. You are simply letting yourself feel good and not making things harder than they have to be. Now let's pull a law of attraction card to see what final attraction guidance is coming through for Scorpio Risings. The law of attraction brings whatever abundance I choose. I want financial prosperity. There are so many wonderful things that are available in this wonderful world, and financial prosperity opens the door to so many of those things. Since the law of attraction responds to my thoughts, I've decided to focus predominantly upon the abundance that is possible, understanding that it is only a matter of time before my thoughts of prosperity will be matched by the flow of financial prosperity. Since the law of attraction will bring me the object of my attention, I choose abundance. So choose abundance in all areas of your life. Don't see yourself as having to be limited by any extenuating circumstances and understand that abundance is not just financial and that might not be the focus this month in terms of where you're attracting your abundance, but it is asking you to change your mindset about what you deserve so that your foundation is built on total abundance and receptivity. So if this is resonating with you, let me know in a comment down below. I'm honestly very interested to see what, what's coming through because you have a really interesting alignment of things nestling together and supporting you and your path and your practice this month as a Scorpio rising. So like, subscribe, do all the things. If you found this helpful, I do offer private astrology consultations below and would love to read for you. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.